take me through Sunday morning? What um, it actually started Saturday evening. Um, Saturday evening, I was upstairs packing duffel bags because me and Mr. Smoot have not been getting along for a while. And I told him I was leaving. And he was downstairs doing his thing, sipping on cognac. And I was upstairs doing my thing, packing. Um, I got dressed, been in the house for quite some time. Um, I've been unhealthy lately, so I've literally been, been in the bed and um, got completely dressed. Got my purse, keys, coat, everything ready to go. He asked if I would stop and talk to him. I told him, I don't really feel comfortable talking to you because you're not very nice. You haven't been nice. Everything you say, it's probably, it's gonna make me cry. You know what I mean? It's an argument, it's gonna turn out bad. And he continued to say he would like this to be cordial and he wants to be friends. Um, we've done a lot of business together, so we were kind of business partners too. And best friends before any of this. And um, so I sit down and I say, well, I'm headed out going bowling. You wanna go bowling with me? So I'm gonna go bowling, just wanna talk. So we talk and it turns into every other conversation. You're a piece of shit, you ain't this, you're not that, you're so stupid. Just, okay, at what point, Fred, are we gonna get back to being friends? Because where you're headed with this is the same place we always end up. And where that ends up is not a really good place, obviously, it's physical. He kept it up. He tried to like have conversation, but he would get back to that, calling me names. You're not anything, you're this, you can only take it so much. Grab my keys, got the purse, got in the car, left. Two hours later, I come home, the whole bottle of liquor, the whole bottle of liquor is gone, and he's passed out. To be, you know, it's predict like predictable. He's like, does the same thing every day. Um, I go to sleep upstairs. I wake up at 10 o'clock in the morning because he busts in still in that same drunken rage that mean person that was screaming at me when i got in the truck and drove to leave was busting in the door screaming at me about keys there's two vehicles there's a cadillac in the garage that he drives mostly and a truck that i've been driving since we've been in atlanta in atlanta for some reason now he wants my keys doesn't want me to be able to go anywhere i said you're in your boxers he's like i gotta go to work he's like running around the house in his boxer boots Gotta go to work, gotta go to work. What are you doing? You're just, but he was aggressive. He would not get away from me. I grabbed my jacket and went, you know, in the bathroom. Shut the door, locked it. And that thing I know, there is a man coming through the bathroom door. There is a hole. <laughs> there was hands coming through the bathroom door. I, the door's obviously open at this point. I back up to the counter. This man tells me, I don't care if you have the keys in your pussy. And he grabs my boxers and pulls me, rips them completely open in the front. Fred, stop. Let me out. Let me, this is me I'm trying to get out. You're not going in. Where do you think you're going? Where are you going? Where do you think you're going? I'm not, I'm not letting you out. I'm not letting you do anything. Okay. Okay. I had a phone behind my back. All right. This, this was from him taking the house phone out of my hand. Yeah, I was terrified. I was like, you know, no clothes on now because you can rip the clothes off. Um, I go into the master bedroom, shut the door, grab my cell phone. Comes busting in there. I try to go in the bath, the other bathroom. He comes in there. Same thing. I'm stuck in the other bathroom now. He won't let me pass. He grabs that cell phone. Okay. Now what do I do? I'm in the house and I can't. The phone. Well, I get past him eventually. The next thing I do, run down the stairs, out the front door over here up here it's 30 degrees outside my shorts are exposed i have on no shoes and i'm about to ring the doorbell fred comes down here chasing me screaming in the middle of the street are you really going to do this to me do you know how much i have to lose are you really going to do this to my career i'm in 30 degree weather in a white beater tank top in boxers i'm holding together with my hand trying to get Anybody, somebody, I'm screaming, somebody call the cops. There was a neighbor down there. They just looked at me, please call the cops. You know, yeah, that's, that's, yeah, we live in that generation. The, the generation that films everything and doesn't react, yeah. So I came down here because I'm screaming. It's not obviously touching me out here. I run in here, grab one of the phones off the couch, go upstairs, lock myself in the closet till the kids are um, From that moment on, I have not talked to him. I have not seen him. They had enough cops in here to keep us and he was allowed to come back one time and get some things, and that's that.
Has he been abusive to you? Um, the first incident started in August. Um, that was not even quite a month after we'd moved here. Um, there was another incident in October. Physical abuse. Physical, yes. He's all their pictures. Um, so in the police reports, there's three different incident reports. There's three totally separate incident reports um, with three separate pictures for all of them. So you stayed. And now I stayed. You want to get a message out. I should have left in August. I should have left when he choked me up against the wall. She left. She called the cops and I should have left. And I stayed because he said he would never do it again. So my message is to, to if they hit you and they touch you, they're going to hurt you and they're always going to do it. And there's a lot going on on Instagram right now because I did as I was cleaning out the truck and cleaning out our belongings, I found he takes the truck to New York for um, CBS New York. I found lots of Viagra and lots of condoms and that's not anything we use. So that was posted first. Um, that was that, that just is what it is. The pictures after that were from Sunday. So the, the finding the whatever I found last night, I found that last night. This police report, this arrest happened on Sunday. So whatever is being said about that, no. My message was out Sunday, okay? That's what the police report says. The cops will hear it. That's when he was arrested. What I posted last night today, hey, that just is what it is. So knowing what he said to you about you called the police, this could cost him his career. He oh, yeah. Knows. Oh, yeah. Are I'm going to tell afraid? you. No, I'm, you no. Well, of course I'm afraid of him. Like, he tried to choke me to, you know, he, like, what do you do when you choke somebody? What's the point of doing that? You were trying to rip my, you know, there's th different instances. I have anxiety, I have panic attacks, my blood pressure, I've been in the emergency room, it's stroke level most of the time. Like, this is not healthy. I sat down beside him and told him on the couch, my doctor told me I need to get healthy. This is stress. I cannot get healthy in this house with you, and I have to leave. And I have told him that throughout the past week. And have there been something going through your mind saying that you didn't want to call the police because of who he is? The first instance was his career. We had been here not even a month. And I was so proud of him as his best friend. All right. I like, love this man. This was my best friend before my boyfriend. Best friend. And was so proud of his new start in his new area and he, he was getting to do what he wanted to do and he was getting all these contracts. I was there when he was being interviewed and everybody wanted to interview him. Then I was there when he got him. You know what I mean? So it was nice to see this and I hated for somebody that I'd never seen do this to me. Like ruin your career. You've got kids, you've got families, you've got, you take care of a lot of people. Usually somebody in his situation has a huge overhead. I didn't want to mess up anybody's life, but I mean, I'm not going to let somebody kill me. You know what I mean? I, I mean, it just is what it is. Yeah, I was trying to protect his career and his image. Of course I was. You know, it never would happen again. I've never seen the side of him. But I mean, too, you know. So, to tell the story now, what is it that you want people to know? First and foremost, I hope my friend gets treatment. He doesn't act like this, to my knowledge, when he's not drinking, but how often that is, it's, it's every day, you know. I, in the past, have struggled myself um, with my health issues. I can't literally kill me right now. Um, I want him to get better. This is a problem. You have an alcohol problem, all right? Please get some help. Second, women, please go and get away the first time it happens. They don't do it the first time because it's the first time it's probably happened to 20 other people you know what i mean like i don't know but it probably has happened to 20 other people him saying i never put my hands on a woman before well it sure was so natural you know it just just have you gotten some courage from the ray rice situation Is that part of it i started to think about all the violence with the um 
athletes and women or just in general. Um, I think the one thing that was interesting is watching him being a, an analyst and having to go to these different networks and be younger and talk about this and to know what, who he is and to know what I live with and to watch somebody sit here and lie and smile in everybody's face like it's all good. You know, he, this happened on Sunday. Of course, he got arrested and got right out. He went to work Monday morning, smiling in everybody's faces. Go Redskins. You know what I mean? It's just not, it's not, you know what I mean? It's not right. You sit there in everybody's face and put on this persona. That's not who you are. You shouldn't be respected for something you're not. 